LED light bulbs, man. They are awesome as headlights. I put these in about nine months ago. They are so bright, so crisp and clear. They go on instantly. My visibility has never been better. Now, when I put these in, I said you can only put LEDs or HIDs in a projector light bulb housing. That's what this is. It has that lens on the front that looks like an eyeball. Well, I've never really tried them in a reflector housing, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to grab my daughter's Hyundai Tucson, which has a reflector headlight in it, and I'm going to try LEDs in that. Coming up. This video was sponsored by JDM A-Star. JDM A-Star is a global provider for automotive LED lighting. They carry the most up-to-date, cutting-edge replacement LED bulbs at competitive prices and provide the best-in-class customer service. So whether you've got a burned-out bulb that needs to be replaced or just want to do a slick mod on your car, click the link in the video description and check them out. All right, I had to turn that off. That was blinding me. What we're going to use today, these I got from JDM A-Star. These are a third-generation dual beam. LED headlight. Dual beam means it's got a high beam and a low beam right in it. These that I put in my Prius are just low beam. There's a separate bulb altogether for the high beam. So when you've got a car that has one headlight that is used for both low beam and high beam, there's actually a bulb in there that has two filaments in it. So it's really two bulbs in one. And they make LEDs that do the same thing. It's an all aluminum design to dissipate heat. It's got a heat sink on the back with a little fan in it. Now the fan sucks air through and helps it dissipate heat even faster. And it doesn't need to be as big of a heat sink when it uses a fan. This is a much more compact design than the ones that I installed in my Prius. And they don't have a, a fan. They're just all heat sink. The other neat thing about this is that there's really two LED bulbs in one here. One of the filaments is towards the top and has a little bit of a shroud on it. That's the low beam. And the one that's totally unexposed is the high beam. And the way that that works is, depending upon where the filament is on the bulb, determines where it hits on the reflector. The low beam stays parallel to the roadway, and the high beam lights up everything in its path. So here you can see, this is my daughter's Hyundai Tucson, and it's got one big massive headlight over here. It's just a reflector headlight. And to remove the old bulb, there is a, a dust guard in the back, a cap that has to come out. All right, pull off the wiring harness. Then there's a little clip that I had to lift up and it gets the old bulb out. Now when you compare the old bulb and the new bulb, you can see there are two filaments in the halogen bulb and one of them is directional. So it goes specifically to this side of the bulb. And you can see the same type of thing is done here where the LED has kind of a cowl on it that makes sure that the light from that front bulb only goes in that direction. The bottom one is totally exposed on both of them. That's the one that will be the high beam. Okay, took a little extra work, but I got the new bulb in the place of the old one. And I'm going to connect it up. And let's just see if it works. A little idiosyncrasy about the Tucson. The key has to be on for the headlights to work. So I can't actually test them the same way that I did my Prius but I will test them when it gets dark. All right, as in my previous tests, I am using a yardstick to hold the light meter the same distance 
from the the lights and I look for the sweet spot the brightest spot and this one says it is 16 and 3 quarters is the brightness on that one and, and the halogen is the same so technically these are both the same brightness now here's what the two lights look like obviously the one on my right is the LED the other one is the halogen and the interesting thing is the the LED looks brighter, but the light meter says they're both the same brightness. This pattern here is typical. You can see it even in the other light with the old bulb. It's just typical of reflector bulbs or reflector housings. Now, as far as scatter is concerned, there is definitely some scatter on both of them. Now let's try high beams. Now in high beams, you can see, obviously it fills the whole space. The entire reflector is, is lit from both sides. And the light is much more scattered. Not that this is gonna matter much, but I'm gonna try it with the high beams and see. It's harder to find a sweet spot because the light is so scattered. All right, that one is 16. And this one is the same. Again, lower because it's not as focused. Here what I've done is I've stopped down the lens really far and lowered my ISO so you could see the light itself. The uh, LED right there, that's in high beam mode. That's using the back filament on the bulb and you can just barely see it from the side. There you can see that's the LED straight on. That is the high beam. Let me come over to this one. And that is the halogen. All right, there you have it. I think they're a side-by-side -side comparison. In my opinion, the LEDs just look brighter. They're crisper. They're not yellow, they're bright white. They cast the same pattern as the halogens do, so I can't imagine that it's going to be offensive to any of the drivers the oncoming traffic should not have a problem with it although it is a brighter white and maybe that i don't know we'll see we're going to drive with them i'm going to put the other one in now and we're going to see how it goes one of the things i've always wondered about was the temperature difference between halogens and leds and so i got myself this infrared thermometer and i'm going to test them right now just to see what the difference is so I'm pointing it right at the aluminum and it's showing 125 degrees. And just for grins, let's look at the front. Here I see 85, 90. 90 seems to be the highest. Now on the halogen, wow, I could feel how hot this thing is. Jumping all over the place, I've seen 155, 159. All right, we're gonna call it 159. And I have 139, 144, 150. Wow, big difference from one side to the other. All right, I'm gonna have to let this one cool down quite a bit before I can put this LED in the passenger side. That halogen is smoking hot. So I'll have to wait until tomorrow for that one. Okay, I got the bulbs installed on both sides now, and there's one more thing that we need to talk about, and that is these dust caps. Now, I did squeeze the wires in so that I could get these dust caps back on, but what they'll do is they'll cause the heat to just circulate in there in a small chamber and that's not really good for an LED bulb. They will not last that long if I put this dust cap back on. So what do you do? Well, you got a choice. You can leave them off, which means they've got plenty of air, 
But the problem then is you could get dust in here that could actually make the inside of your light dirty. So that's the reason why they come up with dust caps to begin with. There is another solution. They make aftermarket caps that are universal. They have a hole in the middle of them. The bulb goes through there, which means the fan sits to the outside of this cap and has plenty of air, yet it, the light itself is sealed off from the dust and the dirt of the engine and all the air blown around. All that dirt doesn't get in there. So these are the best of both worlds. You can pick these up online. They're not that expensive, and they really are a better solution than leaving the cap off or putting the original cap back on. So this is the way to go if you're going to go with LED lights like this. The good thing about this design is that they are expandable. So I'm going to put it on in this orientation so this fits over the lip of the housing. And I want to press this hole forward more, so I'm just going to do this. That'll just allow me to get it over the bulb. All right, it's over the fan, and now i got to work it around the housing. Okay, it's a little close quarters here, but now you can see how I put on this dust cover, and you can see the fan coming right through. That's the way it's supposed to be installed, and I did have to make a couple of cuts to make it fit better, but uh, that's not a problem at all. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to replace your dual beam halogens with LEDs in reflector housings. They're really not that hard to do. They're not that expensive, but they really look amazing and make your car look totally different. So give it a try. I'll put the link in the description. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Visit my website, handydad.tv, for more great ideas and information. Be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted.